I'm screaming. Hey guys, it's Sophia and I'm back with another video. So yesterday, Crimes of Grindelwald came out and I obviously went and saw it because duh. And I have thoughts and opinions and I'm going to share them today. And there's going to be a non-spoiler version and then a spoiler version. So let's get started. Okay, so as for those non-spoilery people, I am unfortunately giving this 3.5 out of 5 stars because disappointment. Um, it felt really rushed and there wasn't much character development and they brought in new characters and they didn't give us enough time. They didn't like, there wasn't any slow parts and there wasn't much explanation and I didn't get to know them. So I didn't really care about them and there seems to be like some plot holes that I'm confused about and basically I am confusion. So uh, yeah, that's what's happening. Obviously go see it because like it's a Harry Potter um, spin-off. It's, it's Fantastic Beast. Come on, it's Wizarding World. Duh. Um, J.K. Rowling like helped write it. But yeah, uh, prepare to be like slightly disappointed. So yeah, that's it for the non-spoiler version. On to the spoiler version! Okay, Credence is a Dumbledore? Okay, what the hell is up with that? Um, I don't understand how this actually works. The only way I can see that happening is if like Aberforth had like an illegitimate child or there's some branch of the Dumbledore family that we know nothing about, which is like confusing because how has that not been mentioned in all of these books and in like the Fantastic Beasts movie before? Um, how was that like, how did like Hermione not see that? I'm confused. So apparently Credence is a Dumbledore and um, that's confusing. But what's also confusing is Dumbledore and the Mirror of Eriset. So we get this scene where Dumbledore is looking into the Mirror of Eriset and he sees Grindelwald. And that's understandable because we know or we assume that he was in love with Grindelwald or still is at this point in love with Grindelwald. And so I get that. But then it starts playing this memory. And that is where I become confusion. Because the Mirror of Erised is supposed to show you the deepest desire of your heart. How is a memory the deepest desire of his heart? Um, that has never like shown up in any of the Harry Potter books where we have seen the Mirror of Erised. It has never once been a memory. How was it suddenly now playing memories? Um, so confusion. In addition, the whole like Lita and Theseus thing is also really confusing to me because I don't see how they are in love with each other. I mean, I don't see them being in love with each other throughout the whole movie. I mean, we know they're engaged. But other than that, I mean, even in the picture where Tina thought that Newt and Lita were enga engaged because they like mistyped it, but I can see where she did because instead of having like a hand on Theseus's shoulder, she has a hand on Newt's shoulder and is facing Newt and is facing away from Theseus and what the hell? Um, I don't see how they're in love. And I really um, didn't like start crying. I didn't start crying when Lita died um, because I and Theseus started screaming because I don't know them. I haven't had enough time. I don't have enough backstory. I can't see that they're in love and I therefore do not have strong feelings when it comes to them. And when Lita died, I did not have strong feelings about her death because I did not know her. So, I mean, honestly, I saw more of a connection between Lita and Newt when Lita was chasing the L plus N on the Hogwarts desk. I mean, if she doesn't like really care about Newt, why didn't she go to that specific desk and open it and start tracing the letters when, and she's engaged to his brother? So how did that happen? How did Lita fall in love, apparently, with Theseus when she was in love with Newt. And Newt said when he was running from Theseus with Tina that he and Theseus don't get along. He had to have mentioned something along those lines or more when he was with Lita. So how did Lita knowing that fall in love with Theseus? And I still don't know about why Newt got expelled. I want to know that and I don't. And I mean, 
And in addition, that part with Lita, Lita having the backstory with Hogwarts, and the part with Newt and Tina, um, when Newt is explaining to Tina that he and Lita aren't engaged, are really the only real slow parts that stick out in our mind from that movie. And the rest was just fast, 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 go, 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 fight scene, fight scene. And I wanted Hogwarts, and. Um, I want character development and some slow parts and I just didn't get it. It was all fast, fast, action, action. And I mean, yes, you need some of that in the movie, but there was way too much. It was crammed too close to together. If this was a four hour movie, I could understand having that much stuff going on because you have time for slow parts and to develop that and to show where it's coming from and to have some backstory or if this was split into two movies, um, you'd have it as well. But it's like she took something with as much like action as like Deathly Hollows and tried to condense it into one movie. There's a reason they made Deathly Hollows into two movies, even if they didn't do it well, because they didn't. But there was a reason it was two movies, because there was so much stuff going on, it was too much to condense it into one movie. They tried to take all of the stuff and condense it into one movie and it didn't turn out well. <sighs> And so, yeah, I am disappointment and confusion, apparently. And then also, also, so uh, I want to know more about Lita and New, and I don't have that. And then in addition, Jacob and Queenie, that also really confuses me. So we have Queenie crying in the street, and uh, Grindelwald's supporter comes and takes her to the house, and she sees Grindelwald. Okay, I understand you can't read minds of like French people because of the accent or something, which like makes no sense, but okay, whatever. But Grindelwald isn't French, so how is she able to read the minds of people around her? They don't have to be right in front of her, because we saw she was able to do that when she was trying to find Jacob, and she was like being attacked by all of these like people's like thoughts and stuff. But she goes into the house with Grindelwald's supporter, and Grindelwald is in the house. How did she not hear Grindelwald's thoughts and know where she was? How is she like oblivious to this? She can read minds. She's a legitimate. That makes no sense. And then also her joining Grindelwald. Okay, so she joins Grindelwald because she wants to have as a future where um, no mages and wizards can be together because she and Jacob can't be together. But no girls slash no matches and wizards can be together in Europe. So if she had citizenship anywhere in Europe, she could be married to Jacob. So I don't understand why she doesn't try to move to Europe and get citizenship there. Questions! So she joins Grindelwald and that makes zero sense to me, but okay, sure. Sure she joins Grindelwald. Okay, but then in addition, the whole thing with Lita and Lita's half brother, and um, Lita like accidentally killing her brother, and Credence, uh, that was so rushed, and I needed more backstory. We didn't get any more backstory, and that was necessary. And again, if this had been made into two movies, we would have had that probably. It was rushed, and we didn't develop the plot lines or the characters. And it was really disappointing. Okay, I'm gonna move on to some stuff I liked because I, I'm getting like really frustrated. So some wonderful things were, number one, Tina and Newt. Okay, that was like super cute. And the scene where Newt is trying to like tell, t is telling Tina that he's not engaged and the whole awkwardness between them and her, him trying to compare her eyes to a salamander's eyes without actually saying the word salamander because Jacob said that girls don't like that. It is so adorable. And then like Tina like guesses it. Do you know how many times she had to read this to identify what he's saying? It's fantastic. But like also, how did, gosh, everything was so rushed and there's no like, I don't understand how Lita found Newt and Tina in there if, if Theseus hadn't told her, and I'm guessing Theseus hadn't told her because if Theseus had told her, then Theseus would probably be with her and the lady with the spirit-like animal cat wouldn't have been trying to attack Lita if she was there to help catch him. And also like reading the letter aloud, like who does that? 
Uh, another cute thing was the whole little cute friendship between Lita and Newt. Again, another slow part. I loved it. We needed more. And when Hogwarts came on, I was like bouncing in my seat. And it was great because Hogwarts and they played the song and it was fun times. And seeing like Dumbledore teach was great. And also the one who was teaching was um, in McClagan. It had to be like the grandfather of Cormac McClagan. The guy Hermione went to Slughorn's Christmas party with to, uh, so Ron would be jealous um, because he was dating Lavender. And that is fantastic. So little things like that were great. But the overall plot was so rushed and I don't understand how one thing got to another. It's just like they skipped it and just wanted us to accept it. What it was for, except just it moving on and like not explaining how things got to where. And also there wasn't enough time on the actual plot itself. Like Newt was supposed to find credence. And he doesn't find Credence, but they just happen to like run into each other as they're looking for their own like ends. So that's confusing. And there is just so many things. And I mean, there, again, there's still like so many like subplot lines that we didn't get enough time for the actual plot line. But like Nicholas Flamel was like great. And Jason, you don't look a day over 375. And seeing like Nicholas Flamel run like this, oh, it was it was it was really funny. Uh -huh. And okay, the the person who played young McGonagall had like the same really like, type of voice of McGonagall, and it was like kind of awesome. And there were like some parts where they were absolutely fantastic, but there were others that just made so made me so disappointed. And I don't understand with the whole credence thing. How credence survived like 50 studying spells when it takes only like uh, when McGonagall barely survived. What was it? Four studying spells to heart, and he got like 50 from really skilled aurors and what and. How was he able to, okay, so how was he able to survive and then somehow he is able to get to a boat and find the circus. How does he do that? How does he find the circus? And like Nagini, I know this is old news, but like that's like one that's super cool, but also like she's a snake. Snakes don't, do, how long do snakes live? Okay, so I looked it up and it looks like Nagini is a boa constrictor and I can't say that for certain. But like Nagini looks like a boa constrictor, that's, that's what I'm assuming she turns into. Uh, boa constrictors live from 20 to 30 years. Um, so maybe it's because she's magical and okay, sure. But if she's turning into a snake, this is in the 20s. She should be dead by like the 50s. Um, so I don't understand how she's Voldemort's snake and questions. So yeah, I am confusion and there are so many questions and not enough answers. And also like the whole Phoenix thing in terms of like theories, um, I'm suspecting that the phoenix that Credence has is like Fox and he's gonna like obviously like ally with Dumbledore and like that's like might be like the same phoenix that Dumbledore's like great grandfather had because like how many phoenixes are there? And also was it just me but did the raven chick that Newt was looking after when he when we had that flashback to Hogwarts look awfully lot that phoenix um that Credence was caring for? Um, cause I thought they were one and the same until it said that it was a phoenix. And so maybe I'm, I'm confused, but like maybe like Newt misidentified it or something. I mean, that's like weird for Newt, but still. Cause like they looked pretty, pretty basically the same. So maybe they'll be like a phoenix allied to Newt or something like that. Or if Credence tries to use the phoenix to attack Newt, it won't because that phoenix might have been the one Newt said was a raven. I, I suspect that Queenie's gonna come back to the good side because she's gonna get her head on her shoulders. Literally so many questions. And I wanna see how Grindelwald convinced his other like guards, especially Abernathy. How did he convince Abernathy who was like in love with Queenie and seemed like seemed not the kind of guy to join Grindelwald into joining Grindelwald? And what the hell was with like the snake tongue when he like put the, the, the pendant thingy that that Grindelwald and Albus made together into his mouth um, while Grindelwald was taking over the carriage in the beginning of the movie? Questions! 
also Credence is still an Obscurus. How was he able to do magic? Because I was under the impression that the magic contained inside an Obscurus burst out and they can't access their magic. That's why Ariana didn't have a wand to do magic at all. I don't understand that at all if Credence can do magic even though he's still he's still an Obscurus. That doesn't make sense to me. In addition to that, I don't know anything about the girl who is helping New. And she looks like, when, when those, those couple scenes, it looked like she was in love with him. Um, and I want to know more about it. How did he meet her? How did they end up working together? How did this happen? And we get no information. She's just there and then she's not there. And like, we're like, I guess, supposed to like not pay attention to it or something. And um, I'm confused and I'm excited for the next one because I really hope these like plot holes and stuff will be explained more. And yeah, but that's my review. 3.5 out of 5 stars. I hope you enjoyed this. My name is Sophia. I make videos when I can. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to click that subscribe button. Check that. Actually, there are no buttons to check. Click that subscribe button. Click that bell icon if you want to be notified when I post new videos, which is super helpful to you because I'm not posting on a regular like day unless like a Tuesday. I'm not posting on regular Tuesdays or Wednesdays or Thursdays or Fridays. So um, it'd be really helpful to you to click that little bell icon and also like leave a comment letting me know what your thoughts are, what you would rate this, what you liked, who you disliked. I'd love to hear it. Do you agree with me? Do you not? Yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Sophia. Bye! Separate.